Welcome to my video on Rich Media Comics creation. In this video, we'll look at the entire process from digital illustration to motion editing to sharing motion comics online. Specifically, we'll focus on page 33 of the Rich Media Comic, Roommate from Another Galaxy. Uh, the digital illustration will be done with software called Procreate, which is an app available on iOS. The hardware we'll be using is an iPad Pro 9.7 inch with an Apple Pencil. After we finish the panel and ex export the images, we'll be using an online software tool called the Comic Machine to create and share the Rich Media Comic. So to start off, I'll uh, go through the uh, script as always. Um, in this story, Roommate from Another Galaxy, this um, our guy Duncan, the, uh, the geeky guy here, uh, finds out his new buddy is an alien. Um, so in this frame, uh, he is trans. He's talking to. They're talking to each other, and then uh, Lang, the alien, transforms from his. Uh, he just exposed his alien self to uh, Duncan. And he then, and then he transforms back into a human again. And then they they say a few lines after that. So um, so basically, um, if we look at the file um, right now, this so this is a a video capture of the uh, my iPad. I'm going to reduce the size of the canvas so that when I view the um, layers uh, you can see what's going on in the actual frame or most of it anyways uh, so you can see I've, I've uh, created folders to separate the the states that the uh, Lang is in um, right now um, as you can see I've named them one two three four five so I'm gonna briefly go through the uh, different layers um, this layer here is the uh, background layer, so basically it's just the um, the nondescript, out-of-focus uh, um, shading of the broom closet that they're in. Um, layer 1 is a, a folder, actually. I'm going to click it here. Um, so I've split up, I've put uh, the line work, the, the gray tone, the dark tone, and some lighting effects all into one folder. Um, layer two is the um, laying the alien in his uh, large form and again I've uh, split them into three layers um, frames th uh, layer three or folder three is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off two so you can see it better layer is the laying in a in a transformed uh, smaller form um, and layer four, he's starting to turn human, and then five, he's his normal human self. There's a lot of folders uh, in this uh, file, uh, so now is as good as time as any to to um, to talk about folders. Folders weren't available um, in earlier versions of Procreate, but since they've added them, it's been quite useful, and uh, and also they're. They're ex when you export them to Photoshop files, the the folders remain intact. Um, so I'm at I'm on layer five on uh, folder five right now. Um, so I w I'm going to open up two layers. Uh, so it'll be layer thirty nine and forty. Uh, say I had stuff on there I wanted to put into a folder. Basically, you want to uh, select the topmost uh, layer that you want uh, in a folder, and then underneath it, you swipe uh, right, and uh, you up here you get these uh, icons there: single file, single layer, and then folders. If you click on this right here it automatically creates a folder so so now here we have the uh, exported time-lapse uh, video of the uh, creation of this frame um, so I've exported it as a video and I'm playing it in quick time this is how it starts out um, so underneath this file is the uh, rough thumbnail drawing that I created um, for the uh, the script 
Um, so I Im imported it. I drew it on Photoshop, but that's beside the point. I could have very easily done it in uh, Procreate. But uh, so what I'm what I'm doing now is I increased it to the size of the file uh, because the pro the thumbnail was a low res uh, drawing just for speed. Um, so I've increased it and put it in the background at a ghosted uh, a ghosted image. Let's turn down the opacity. Um, and I'm using a blue line to um, do a tighter rough of the illustration. So how I usually like to do rough lines is uh, just just as a sideline here is I usually like to use a blue color whether I start off as a, a lighter blue and then progress we get to a darker blue. The blue color uh, is um, doesn't register with the uh, when I do the final black lines because the, the blue is a different color uh, so it doesn't add to the weight of the black line. So I found that when I used to use a gray line um, when I turn off the rough layer all of a sudden the black line doesn't have as much weight as I thought because the, blue, because the gray was adding to it but I found the blue doesn't do that um, so the the um, the um, brush that I use is uh, is an oval shaped brush. Uh, as I mentioned, um, I use in the brushes videos. I, I like to use a flat brush, and then depending on the azimuth, which is uh, this uh, this uh, dynamic there, uh, that uh, depending on how I hold it, uh, you get a thick and thin line. But when I'm just sketching, uh, uh, usually you know not too worried about the second thin line I'm just trying to get you know the shape and form out um, so it's more of a so since it's an oval shape um, since it's an oval shape but uh, no matter how you hold it you, you're gonna get some uh, a, a relatively strong line width coming out um, so uh, yeah so like I said you know, you're not obviously constantly worried about you know how, how which way you're gonna hold it to to get the thin or the thick line so back to the uh, time-lapse video of the uh, drawing um, so here I'm I'm laying down blue uh, lines and progressively I start off with a as right here you can see I start off uh, because I did I didn't like the, uh, the position of the hand up here is maybe too aggressive and so I, uh, I changed position now when I first do a rough I, I use a low opacity uh, using the opacity uh, controls um, and rough out the drawing so when that happens it's a lot lighter and then you increase the opacity uh, as you as the line becomes more distinct And if the line is too dark, I'll, I'll take an eraser, a very light eraser, and, and, and uh, push it back a bit more compared to traditional drawing. It's, uh, it's a lot more, a lot more flexible in that way and forgiving. And as you can see in the drawing, sometimes when the head's in the wrong position, I would use the selection tool, which is this tool up here to uh, select an area to uh, move or rotate or size up or down. As you hear, the hand was in the wrong position, so I selected it and moved it. It's a very helpful tool for a composition as well. So I am into the black line again. Um, I use a um, a brush that is has a very flat shape. So uh, depending on how I hold the uh, the, uh, the the orientation of the uh, the apple pencil, it's a thick or thin line, or or a variance of if I'm doing a curved uh, line. So so here I'm uh, roughing out the. Uh, background uh, the background is a um, broom closet and it'll be out of focus it's not important to this panel uh, I'm gonna pause it for a sec here so the background is going to be the same background for all three uh, uh, iterations of this alien guy uh, because he as you remember at the beginning he's gonna actually morph back into a human and that's gonna take uh, take place in three or four steps I believe 
so this background is it needs to actually um, fill up the the entire section where the alien is. Whereas here, I didn't. I can you know take artistic license and just work around the character here. I didn't have to fill in the background, although I could have. But having this sort of uh, halo effect uh, actually, you know, brings out the uh, the character more. Uh, but I don't have that luxury here just because it's gonna. This character is is one of four layers. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting in um, with this white here, uh, which is on a separate layer, of course. Uh, this white layer is, I'm, I'm just going to fill up the entire uh, drawing of the alien with this white layer. And that serves two purposes. One purpose is, of course, to block out the, uh, the background. Also, um, when I have a base layer, which is actually the entire alien, I can use the selection tool. And I'll, I'll explain when I show you that to actually uh, automatically make a selection of the alien without uh as in photoshop saving a selection to a channel or something like that so i'm gonna pause it and show you in real time what i mean by that this is a video grab of uh, video of my uh ipad actually so you can see in uh folder two is what the alien uh, where the alien uh drawing is if i turn it on and off by the way i, I moved everything over on the canvas so you can see it um, again so folder 2 I'm gonna open up the uh, folder so that you can see all the layers uh, you can see number 2 is the line if I turn that on and off it disappears and there's the 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 um, black and then there's the gray uh, G um, but the the G it was um, I laid down a, uh, a, a white uh, uh, layer that fills up the entire form I could to to actually um, do the black or anything else actually for that matter uh, to actually make a selection of all the pixels on that layer I just have to click it and and go to select what that does is you can see there's uh, these cross bars here that means that area is not uh, it can't uh, is, is actually blocked off and masked off so you can't draw on it so it automatically gives you a um, uh, a mass to draw in so if I open up a new layer I can um, just freehand draw the uh, black without worrying that it's gonna go over onto the uh, background automatically so back to the time-lapse uh, so here I'm adding gray tone to the uh, yeah. alien figure uh, as you can see, the, the brush is very distinct in that it um, has a feathered edge on one side and, and a more distinct uh, hard edge on the other. Um, again, I'll want to pause it and show you the brush. Um, I'm always trying to actually make it as, as fresh looking as possible and, and, and to not make it look uh, too overworked. Um, if you have a, a more... Um, if you have a more uh, uniform brush, like a, maybe just an oval or something like that, to achieve to achieve uh, a shading, you're gonna have to use the pressure sensitivity to to lightly stroke in uh, shading in areas that are lighter, and then progressively uh, darken the, or, or or heavy up the um, the pressure as you go to the darker areas. But with this brush, and again, I'm using the Asmith function on so that it actually follows the uh, the barrel orientation of the uh, of the uh, Apple pencil and what that does is allows me to uh, orient the brush so that the light side is uh, let me show you the actual brush here so the light side where the uh, the you know the uh, the feather end of the brush is would be lighter and then the dark side will be on the bottom side so I hold the brush in that way and then this uh, with this orientation as opposed to this orientation uh, I'm using two fingers to actually rotate the uh, the shape uh, with this orientation it follows the barrel rather than is, per is not perpendicular to the barrel it's actually in line with the barrel so I'll show you what I mean I'll pick a, a gray color maybe a little darker so it shows up okay so I'm holding it um, the barrel uh, horizontal to the uh, canvas 
as you can see. And now if I hold it uh, perpendicular to the canvas, I mean vertically, you see how it, uh, it's very fresh actually. It's like a, a loaded brush that's on, on one edge and, and not the other. So you can achieve sh uh, shape and form in shading without too much work. So back to the time lapse again. Uh, so you can see I've, uh, I'm adding the uh, the the um, darker shading. I guess you could say it's the, like the core shadow on a, on a drawing um, on a different layer. And the reason I use a different layer is so that I could edit it. Uh, I'm like I just tell people I'm sculpting it in a way. Um, because if I make a mistake, if I do overdo it, I can take it back by using an eraser, and it won't disturb the uh, the gray underneath. So uh, here I'm doing the uh, the second iterate transformation of the alien. Maybe I'm gonna speed up the because uh, it's basically the same technique. Um, I'm doing I'm doing a rough of the uh, of the human form now, and again, all these are in separate folders so that I I can uh, turn them on and off and export them separately. Here I'm using a more greener uh, tone just because I I want to actually um, while I was drawing I don't know if it didn't show up but uh, while I'm drawing I want to actually see the uh, blue line from the previous form so that I could actually gauge how big the form should be because it, it i guess it's in, in a form it's, it's very much like animation where you where you have to have a ghosted image to see how the form progresses so again i add a white layer and then add the gray it doesn't show up in the time lapse but i you know i usually turn on the uh, the selection mask feature So as you can see, the finish line has a more, th a more severe, thick and thin quality to the, than than the uh, rough line, and that's because I use that flat brush. I mean, it's not for everybody, but it, it it seems to work for me. I find just using, like, say, if you use a round brush and and, and just use the pressure sensitivity, you don't get the uh, the crispness that you would get from this technique. So after uh, the uh, file is finished, I have to uh, export the uh, different layers uh, to my desktop. Unfortunately, the Procure doesn't allow you to actually resize the file uh, at the moment. I mean, not easily anyways. I mean, you can copy and paste it into, a, into another file of a different size, but that's, that's kind of a roundabout way of doing it. Um, you could actually use uh, Adobe Sketch, and as of this moment, um, apparently in 2019, the um, next year, the uh, they're coming out with Adobe Photoshop for the iPad. In which case, that's it's amazing. Um, but uh, you know what? I, I I love Procreate so much that uh, I st I'm probably would still be using that to draw, just because there's some things in Procreate that I actually prefer over Photoshop as far as the uh, the brushes and, and and certain other features it seems a little bit more streamlined too as far as uh, specifically for drawing um so what i would do is uh, i'm going to export different uh f um jpeg versions of the th of the uh, different um different states of the the alien i'm going to move over this th canvas just because i'm on a smaller uh 9.7 was if i was on my 12.9 uh, inch uh, ipad pro uh, it wouldn't be a, the menu wouldn't take up so much of the screen. Um, so the I there is two options. Uh, the um, the rich media comic sharing platform called the Comic Machine uh, that was that supports uh, JPEGs and PNGs. PNGs uh, allow for transparency. Um, you can you know do a translucent or cut out shapes with a transparent background you can overlay them over backgrounds um, but uh, unfortunately the PNGs are larger in size so unless the the uh, layer is moving it's not necessary to go to a PNG 
in this case uh, the character just dissolves between you know these states and there's no movement as far as real-time movement in that layer so uh, it's probably it's best to export different uh, um, export them in different states as JPEGs but the um, but since I'm going to be doing it on the desktop and it will be a, a Photoshop file, I'm, I'm going to export it as a Photoshop so, uh, file, sorry, um, and then just do everything on the uh, desktop. Uh, so what I have to do is uh, you close down the file and then swipe right, hit the share button. And of course, you, your uh, Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi has to be on, but of course it should be on already because you're using the a Apple Pencil. And also make sure your desktop or laptop is uh, has airport on, and you can recognize it there. Tap it. Usually, it's pretty quick, and all done. So here I've uh, I've uh, exported it to my desktop, and uh, right now uh, the resolution uh, I created it was at uh, 2048 by 1536 um, right now th the comic machine is 1024 by 768 um, visual resolution so we, we since we don't zoom in on this uh, image we probably don't need the full resolution the one I draw it at uh, 2048 we needed to have that resolution so we can actually execute the illustration and now we're gonna size it down like so and I will open up the layers and export each layer separately uh, as JPEGs and uh, a medium quality uh, even if I set it at 50 50% uh, 50 quality is uh, good enough and uh, I'm using Photoshop save for the web option which actually reduces the size considerably um, so each of these files I'm gonna name it with a dash one dash two consecutively okay second one so I've now finished exporting the uh, images now I'm gonna open my Chrome browser to the comic machine and I have a file roommate from another galaxy so it's partially finished um, I'm going to scroll to this page and add a new blank page now I'm going to add go under the layer menu add image and I'm going to find the first file so now when it's placed it will actually fit the canvas uh, exactly because the canvas is uh, 1024 by 768 and that's the um, resolution of our image um, if I close down this layer options you can see the first layer here uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and add all four layers once and you can see a stack of four layers um, so I'm gonna set the duration here uh, with a slight uh, fade in from a zero opacity in and out uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna put a weight here for now I'm gonna apply the same uh, these same parameters to all four layers
Okay, so let's uh, preview this page. So I put a weight on the first layer, so I have to click it before I go to the next one. And click it again. And click it again. All right, so it seems to be working great. Now I am going to input the uh, text. Um, so as you remember in, in the PDF, there's a few lines of, uh, of uh, dialogue between the two characters. Um, I've sort of um, copy, copied and pasted it into a note page and I uh, already actually set the, um, the line breaks. Um, another thing I haven't done yet is uh, I'm going to be setting the um, the bolding, but I'll do that in the comic machine uh, interface. Okay, so the first thing that is said is Duncan, the, uh, the little guy, says, "Are you retired? I'm not go I'm not going to let a space alien with me. What is this, a '70s sitcom?" So I'm going to copy this first dialog box. I'm going to place my cursor, select uh, um, layer one, add text, and then copy and paste that in there. Um, set the uh, parameters for the text box. Curve tail, two point, two point uh, width, and one point border. So I want to place the um, dialog bubble in a inconspicuous uh, spot. I'm going to have them all sort of hanging from the top of the uh, page. Um, so I think the common execution of these tails is that it should be about halfway to the speaker's mouth. Um, I'm going to add some um, bold uh, text. I'm going to make that a little tighter there. retarded so I'm going to go back to my uh, text um, input box there and put an asterisk around the word I want bolded space in should be bolded and then 70s sitcom oops the width a bit. So it looks about great. And I'm going to give it a fade in duration as well. So it's not so abrupt when uh, the box comes out. And I want to wait. Okay, so I'm going to close down the layer options. And you can see because I had one selected, the, uh, the uh, text dialog box came in right after it in between here. Now I don't want to wait in between the image coming up and the text. So I'm going to take out the wait on layer one. And I'll do one more bubble before I uh, speed things up. So this Lang guy says two days, that's the max. The max it'll take, then I'm out of your hair. Again, I've uh, formatted that. And I want it right after layer two. I'm gonna add text. Copy and paste the text in there. Um, this one like two days uh, old. and max and then I'll be 
say out. Okay, and then now I'm gonna add the same parameters I did to the previous bubble. Curved tail, two point width, and one point border. So the beauty of the, this comp machine is that you can have an unlimited sort of conversation or dialogue between characters because. Uh, as long as you have a reasonable amount of space, uh, you can go on forever just because the, the bubbles and the dialogue is refreshed. And because there's timing involved, there's a, there's a bit of real life, uh, real world conversation timing to it. And I want to wait. Actually, I'm, because uh, there's uh, this bubble is way is uh, not anywhere near this uh, or over the, uh, covering any of this first bubble I don't need to have a weight between the first and second bubble so I'm going to go back to layer 2 and take out the weight there okay so let's preview it let's go check one more time the uh, timing here okay so you see what's going to happen the first layer comes up and then 0.5 second delay the uh, first bubble comes up and then 0.5 seconds after that second bubble comes up um, and then you have to click to see the rest of it actually um, yeah I think these these actually dissolve on their own without a click so I'm going to take out the weights on these layers as well And I'm going to put a delay, um, a delay between the two because I don't want it to happen too fast. Uh, between the layers, I'm going to, so between this layer and that layer, I'm going to have a delay of about uh, half a second. And then a delay before layer six comes up. Okay, well, let's see how that looks preview page so you don't want to preview the entire comic because that'll take forever so we're just going to preview page under the page menu all right so you reader reads that clicks all right and then the, another line comes up so I'll finish this off and then come back so I've inputted all the other text and put in the uh, the uh, the timing for all of them um, so I've added the, this uh, text in layer 4 here and also two more text layers after the last image appears. And so I took out the weight after the last image because I wanted the text to come up right away. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so um, because um, uh, the what, what happens when whenever there's a weight, uh, or they call it a click weight, um, or wait click um, after free after three layer three uh, the next layer uh, next text layer comes out uh, so what happens whenever there's a, a, a weight uh, when the user clicks the uh, weight button the uh, all the text disappears with automatically which is actually makes a lot of sense um, but let's let's just take a look and see what happens I'm gonna make it full screen so these two text blocks come up. That one comes up. Transformation takes place, and then two more text bubbles comes up. So if you want to see the rest of this comic, uh, go to thecomicmachine.com, and then uh, click the browse button and look for the roommate from another galaxy. Uh, I'll also post the direct link to the comic. Uh, in the uh, comments right below uh, if you found this video useful please feel free to click the like button uh, leave a comment or question and um, 
subscribe to this channel uh, if you want to see the rest of the uh, videos and the videos to come. Thanks very much for watching. Yeah.